one account. I'm Vioni Dumel. This is Boston Lanka News bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. <laughs> Today, the Muslims in Sri Lanka are concerned, nervous and somewhat angry about the growing number of anti-Muslim protests and attacks carried out by hardline Buddhist groups. Recently, a mob that included some Buddhist monks targeted a Muslim-owned clothing store and warehouse just outside Colombo, raising religious tensions. The Muslim Council of Sri Lanka in a statement expressed its deep concern and strongly condemns the unwarranted attacks against the Muslim business establishments. Sri Lanka's newly formed monk-led Bodhubal Sena or Buddhist force has denied any involvement and urged the government to bring the culprits to justice and clear the group's name. <music> Meanwhile, President Mahindra Rajapaksa urged monks not to incite religious hatred, although some argue that the government could have done more to control the extremist elements. We now join with Dr. A.R.M. Imtiaz, Visiting Assistant Professor at the Temple University in Pennsylvania to discuss more about Muslim concerns and their views. Uh, Dr. Imtiaz, uh, could you please share your views uh, about the growing tension between some extremist Sinhala Buddhist groups and the uh, Muslim community in Sri Lanka? We have to understand uh, the factors uh, behind these mobilization uh, against the Muslims. Now, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, singular Buddhism um, came, I mean, uh, uh, came and exists, uh, exists uh, as a reactionary force. You know, you know they, uh, these singular Buddhist forces always, you know, think that, you know, the, uh, minorities, you know, before the independence, white colonialism, then after independence, you know, both Tamils and Muslims, you know, uh, Muslims um, threaten their stability, all these minorities, you know, would go against their interests. So this fear has been behind the singular Buddhism for centuries and from our independence as well. You know, as we all know that Muslim elites have supported the war against the Tamil since 1948. So that time, during that period, you know, uh, singular Buddhists thought that uh, Muslims, Muslims were and are very loyal partners to their to their struggle against the Tamil. Then during this process, you know, we have won many concessions from the single Buddhist. You know, especially like you know madrasas and wearing hijab. You know, we got tons of beautiful concessions which you never even imagine in the Western world. So that was until end of the war. Then we saw what has been happening. To me, you know, this is the result of the uh, singular Buddhist peoples. Even though they are majority, they do have a, that minority complex. So that complex, you know, uh, triggers the tension against the minority now against the Muslims. Uh, is there any validity of the argument? Some express saying that in Sri Lanka, Muslim community is being treated differently. For instance, uh, having different laws in marriage, divorce, custody, and maintenance. Yeah, it is. It is totally true. You know, you see, it's very, very obvious that Muslim Sri Lanka have been enjoying 
tremendous uh, concession from the uh, successive Sinhalese government. You know, you see, uh, we have a we have a separate education. We have separate schools in which you would learn Arabic, uh, all those Islamic things. And there are so many concessions we got uh, from the government of Sri Lanka. That is because our loyalty to the government. So you see, uh, you know, these concessions you know, have been there for for uh, since 1948. And so singular Buddhist extremists, what you said now, did not bother about these concerns until the end of the war in the Tamil. Now the question is, uh, why are they coming now at this point? The answer is, you know, so the simple answer is, you know, when you have a, when you have a very organized identities in any country, uh, where you have uh, more than uh, more than two ethnic groups, you know, you know, then the majority ethnic group, if it is very organized and politicized, that will always seek enemies. So not just because we have a concession, they are coming against the Muslim. You know, actually these were there for a long time. So as I as I said earlier, why now? Why now? That's because you know. Now, they, they already defeated the LTD. So the second target is Muslims. So that's why now they're claiming you now Muslims have a lot of concessions, which is true. Do, do we, yes, we, we have a tons of uh, positive concessions. These were, they, these were made possible of loyalty. But now these questions have been questioned. What is the general view of the Muslim community about the way Sri Lankan government handling uh, the hate campaign. That's a good question. You know, uh, I just um, presented a paper uh, on the Muslim issues um, at the uh, Association for Asian Studies in San Diego. In my paper, uh, you know, I argue many factors, including, you know, you know, one of the factors about the fear among the Muslims. You know, uh, for my paper, I have interviewed uh, almost 250 Muslims from the from the five districts. So almost 10 percent of Muslims are extremely unhappy about the way the government has been handling the problem since 2010. You know, they think that you know, government Sri Lanka can do a lot of things to curb the trend against the Muslims. So almost majority of Muslims think that the you know, government has failed to deliver peace or to, to, to neutralize these forces. In your view, uh, what's the perception of the Muslim community about the Bodh Balasena organization? Yeah, you know, as I said earlier, you know, you know, they are they're extremely unhappy about the, you know, about the way they are, uh, I mean, about the way they are campaigning against the Muslims, against the Muslims. You see, if you, the one major factor, Muslims are unhappy uh, over the mosque. You know, as you may know, uh, Muslim Sri Lanka, we form our identity based on our religion. So if you are Muslim, you know, you would consider mask as a, your key identity maker. So when you attack that mask, which which Muslims would consider the nothing but that is the everything, you know, that goes against their identity and values. So we saw that 2000, uh, uh, we saw that extremists came strongly against mosque in Anuradhapura and other places. So they were so unhappy uh, because they because their main identity uh, their main identity uh, maker had come under brutal attack by the Sinhalese forces. So, so this makes many Muslim unhappy. Uh, uh, you know, almost 68% of Muslims uh, from my survey uh, said that they are extremely unhappy the way the, B, uh, way, uh, the, way the BBS um, doing campaign against the Muslims. Especially, they are extremely very unhappy about the, about the attack on the Muslim mosque. A Muslim Congress is a partner of the Sri Lankan government and there are many prominent Muslim ministers in the government. So why you think these Muslim leaders are not doing much for the Muslim community? 
This is a very good question. Um, you know, that's the question. You know, many Muslims asking these days. You know, especially uh, it comes from. It, it especially uh, that that question goes again uh, goes to the uh, Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, which claimed that they are the representative of the Muslims. Uh, you know, as you know, you know, we have I think we have sixteen uh, Muslim ministers in the the parliament. Uh, these Muslim ministers are most of the Muslim Muslim ministers are keeping quiet, and few of them are. Uh, supporting the government, and they said that no government is nothing to do with all these things. Even those ministers, Muslim ministers, uh, uh, did not come out openly against the BBS. So Muslims, uh, Muslim, so Muslim Sri Lanka do uh, you know do think uh, think that you no know, their political representation ha has failed them miserably. They don't have a trust. It's really, it's really kind of bad trend when you lose your, when you lose the trust over the leaders. You send them to parliament. You know, you see, in democracy, you know, we have a political representation. Then, then when you lose your trust over over them, it's very likely it may such a trend would lead you to think or to go beyond the uh, democratic alternative or or to put the trust on the people who would who would uh, mobilize you based on your symbols and values against the mainstream politics. So the point is that the Muslim ministers have failed the Muslim in Sri Lanka miserably. And Dr. Mtiaz, uh, could you please give us a few specific suggestions to build harmony among different ethnic groups in Sri Lanka? First, we have to de politicize the system i mean you i mean deep politicize the ethnic or religious relations over the politics when you when you use your ethnic or religious values to win to win power you know what we see in sri lanka is inevitable so I would think that you no know, Sri Lanka politician should renounce. It doesn't matter Muslims or kind of Christians or single We all have to give up. You know, all we all we all have to be clean or give up these uh, this nasty uh, this nasty politics um, to win power. You know, if you want to win power, there are so many ways to win power. Why do you want to use your ethnic or religious values to win power? So first of all, the, uh, all the political parties, it doesn't matter single or Muslim Tamil, you know, they have to stop, stop, uh, stop, um, stop, stop going behind their ethnic or religious politics. Number two, government Sri Lanka has a responsibility to seek a solution to the grievances of the Tamils and Muslims. Number three, you know, government Sri Lanka has taken a very strong action against the BBS. Very strong action. There should be no tolerance at all. If we would tolerate these people, you know, it's very likely Muslims would lose the trust in the system. That's the three best ways, you know, I would recommend, I would tell to seek a real peace in Sri Lanka. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.